This is three questions with my friend, Dr. Outlaw. Now you gotta listen to that. I like I, I don't know I, I never know what to do during that song. <laughs> so I just like I don't know if I should dance or just sit there and just be weird. But I like the dancing. <laughs> yeah, like I it's, it's kind of a fun little song. So Hey, it, it's been awesome just to sit and talk with you and hang out and stuff like that. And uh, Dr. Ella was actually in a program we're doing called LLA. And I'm going to be honest with you, and I, we were talking about this before. You just were laughing at everything I was saying. You're like, just just made me feel so good in these spaces. And it, like it's, I think a lot of teachers feel like it's so overwhelming. And uh, it really just kind of inspired me. And I was going to tell you this story. Um, a lot of people like they just put their cameras on no matter what they're doing. And there's a superintendent in one of my sessions. I don't know if you heard this. And I was speaking for an hour and the person before said, Hey, just keep your cameras on. I'm like, no, like you don't need to, if you, if you don't want to like be totally present, like I don't need to see it. So the superintendent for an hour just walked on the treadmill like this. And I'm like, I don't need to see this. (laughs) I'm like, good for you. Get all the exercise, but just Turn that camera off. I don't need to see just pumping arms the whole time, right? <laughs> so that's how I, so that's how I say, like, how meaningful that I just, you know, you just made me feel like a million bucks every time I presented. So I just, like, wanted to sit down and talk to you. And uh, we were talking before, and you, you said you've actually had 20 years as an administrator. Is that, is that correct? That is. That is. And most of it as building principal at the middle school here. Uh, in Bayshore on Long Island. In Long Island, the home of the home of, I got to do this, of my favorite hockey team ever, the New York Islanders. <laughs> <laughs> the best, right? So how, how long did you teach for? I taught for five years. Five, five years? in New York City. Yeah. Total. Yeah. And then, and and then, then when it's... And on the shoulder. That's awesome. That's awesome. So like when you look back at your career in education, so I'm assuming it's 25 years, right? I'm just doing the quickest math possible. (laughs) So when you look back at your career, like who is like a teacher that you think of that really inspired you? I have to tell you, I never had confidence in my math skills. I would get thrown off in a heartbeat. And there was this one math teacher, Mr. Campo, and there's not much that I remember, but I remember him Mm -hmm. and I remember him always um, instilling in all of the students that he worked with that they can do it. Like it it didn't matter what the problem was. He took his time to break things down Mm -hmm. for you in such a way that you didn't feel stupid. Um, And I felt like all of the teachers prior to that almost acted as if I was supposed to know Mm -hmm. what to do. And um, when he came and said, you can, and then I actually started to see that I could, mm-hmm. he, he then instilled in me something that I continue to practice now to this day with the children that I interact with, but more importantly, with the staff that I interact with. And that, that like, I, so I, like, I'm going to, I'm terrified to even say this, that, like, that feeling with math specifically Sometimes I felt like my math teachers just just got math, right? Like it just came easy to them. And it and I know that feeling stupid, like you kind of feel like, how come I, it's not just easy for me, right? And there's and then the teachers that like I actually taught math for years and I begged not to teach math because I like I, I barely passed this. Like, why would you put me in this? And I found it was actually one of my favorite subjects because I struggled with it and I had an understanding. And as someone who like speaks, one of the things I work with speakers is saying like Hey, like the, the last thing that you want to do is speak above the crowd because you want people not feeling like I can't do that. Like I, that's not my, you know, you want to get them to see yourselves in the story. Right. And like, is that what your teacher did for you? Right. Like got you to see that. Yes. And more so to the point where then I was able and willing Mm -hmm. to challenge that next level. And on the Regents exam, when I actually passed it, because in New York state, you have to, at the end of the course, take this exam and I passed it that just took me over the moon and no one could then take away that feeling of pride that I then had in my own skills and abilities and he gave that to me in this okay now this is Mr. Campo is that what you said yes all right Mr. Campo shout out (laughs) (laughs) that's like my favorite that's like my favorite (laughs) 
Anyone who listens to the podcast probably, knows. It's probably dead. Oh, all right. Well, okay. He was old when he was teaching me. So. Well, well, legacy lives on, though, and I think that's the that's yeah. a mark of a great yeah. teacher. There's a there's a thing uh, Stephen Covey talks about, like great leaders exhibit confidence and competence, right? And I think as I'm listening to you, that was instilled in you. And so when you look at that, I probably there's actually some things that you learn from your teacher, Mr. Campo, that probably you have taken that don't just apply to math, but apply to your leadership. And, and we were having great conversations, just kind of the variance of your career, you know, some of the highlights, some of the struggles, things like that. But when you look at your career as an administrator, who do you think of that was like a, a great admin, whether it was like as a student, you know, as a colleague, who do you, who do you really look to and why? Well, it, it's interesting because here's another um, person who ha- allowed me to believe in my skill sets and abilities. And that was the superintendent of the school district that I'm currently working in. Her name was Dr. Evelyn Holman. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Holman um, invested time in me and just to have conversations. I was a little hungry, little uh, educator. I wanted to learn everything right, right, that I right. could. I wanted to ask questions. And How do you do what you do? Like, I just wanted to be better. It really was my, my intent and goal mm-hmm. was to be better than what I was. And I always tell everybody like that. What I'm seeking is to be better tomorrow than I am today. Mm-hmm. And so when I um, first sat and talked, I would listen to her and I'd lean in. And I take in everything that she said. And she often would just inspire everybody that was around her to do better mm-hmm. and um, inform them, taught them. And I was like, I want to I want to do that. Like, I want to be like that. Yeah. And um, she would then allow me to sit with her, talk to her and just ask questions. She's a superintendent. She had a whole lot that she could mm-hmm. have been doing, but she took the time to talk with me. And whenever I would talk with her, she would say, your next step needs to be superintendent. You need to think about one day becoming a Mm -hmm. superintendent. And I'm like, what do you see in me that I could do that? I could never do what you're doing. And she's like, you couldn't do what I, what I'm doing, but you can do what you need to do. I love that. And as a black educator and, you know, minority um, female, she's like, you're in rare um, demand right now, but we need more people mm-hmm. who understand the experiences of the children that we serve. Because here in Bayshore, it's a very diverse, both socioeconomically and um, ethnically diverse mm-hmm. district. And I just, I thank her every day because not only did she sit with me and talk with me, but she did give me the first opportunity at an administrative position. She was the one who said, if I can put some chess pieces in place, Hmm. I want you to be on the board. And she allowed me to then um, become an entry level administrator under her leadership. And I saw the many things that she was doing with the administrators and helping to develop their skills in the meetings that she was holding with all of the administrators that um, it again inspired me to incorporate a lot of what she's doing into my own leadership style. And, and I think that's like, you know, there's so many of these conversations like it's from every level in education where it's like, hey, we want you to be like this or be like this. And I think really, it's really important that you are yourself and, and having a, a, like a variance of people that you connect with, right? And different experiences and things like that. It's like, and I see sometimes even school districts when they do like basically, hey, we want like common assessments. We want like everything the same, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, that's not really giving you the, that's not really giving the teacher the capacity to really develop. Like I would never teach from a script, never. Because that you're taking away yes. the most important thing to me as a teacher is my own personality. Right. Like that, that literally is, is what I, and I probably, if you took away my personality, I probably wouldn't have connected with anybody. Right. Like, and I think that that's an important element. I I don't know if you're like hinting that to your staff that you're going on to leave the superintendent position. Cause I know you're a principal. Yeah, no, 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 no. (laughs) 
<laughs> this is like this is like no. the like uh, the the announcement. The like, unveiling. Yeah, the, yeah, this is the like I'm gonna call this the announcement <laughs> podcast. I, here, here's that. Here's the like the opposite of of what you said, and I make fun of it all the time, and I call it the superintendent entourage. And I like I know you know this, right? The superintendent entourage, right? Superintendent yeah. comes in, yeah. they got their board members, they do the little kneel down, <laughs> like in classrooms, they pretend they like care what's going on. And it's like a photo op. It has nothing to do, right? Yes. And the 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 it's like I understand there's politics. I understand there's there's board. And I, like I understand to be honest with you, I, I was never a superintendent. But I have seen superintendents just like you're describing, who make like make large gigantic like organizations feel very close and tight knit and like family and then you have more you're more comfortable trying some new things taking some risks because you know they got your back right as opposed to they're just going to throw you on a political bus i hate the superintendent entourage so much (laughs) can i tell you what you're saying is something i was just talking to somebody Mm -hmm. about right so Besides the inspiration that Dr. Holman gave, there's um, the current Maryland superintendent, um, Dr. Karen Salmon, Mm -hmm. was the superintendent here in Bayshore after Dr. Mm -hmm. Holman left. There were a couple of other superintendents. She was masterful at taking that large group and making you feel Mm -hmm. like you were seen and heard and it was the first time that i had ever experienced what it felt like to be a member of a team Mm -hmm. in that way and it was all because my thoughts and opinion seemed to be valued even if it wasn't Mm -hmm. (laughs) i i felt like she heard me she saw me and when i was talking to somebody about what it means to be a team it was making people feel like what they said mm-hmm. mattered and that they as an individual is what contributed to the larger group and finding um, both strategies and uh, ways of bringing the individuals mm-hmm. in right. in that way creates such a powerful um, organization. And I, I really, I think that that is a little bit of what's missing. Yep. And um, my first year, and then I'm going to shut my mouth. No, um, this is your, po- this is your first... podcast. You talk as long well as you are. Yes, I was. Uh, d- being a leader is hard. Mm-hmm. And being a leader um, helps you to learn more about yourself than you realize that you'll ever walk away with. Mm-hmm. And I remember in my first couple of years, um, As an administrator, having to try to um, both learn how to navigate all of the different personalities while still trying to figure out what my own leadership style was, was a challenge. I would go home um, and cry Mm -hmm. sometimes because I felt like I was doing everything wrong. Mm And I couldn't figure out what mattered. I couldn't even establish my own vision about what should happen Mm -hmm. because I didn't feel like I myself knew what my own heart felt needed to happen. Mm -hmm. And and so it became hard because in in the leadership role, principalship specifically, it stops at you. You're the one Mm -hmm. who has to decide than what happens and people are looking to you to tell them what happens and you're trying to figure it out for yourself at the same time and and that's like that's that's um that's a reality of leadership in many ways is that you the the, a lot of the great leaders that i've connected with they tended to take all the blame but give away all the credit you know what i mean and and i and i don't mean that just in a um like in a uh, like a, a showy sense, a problem situation, right? Like they, right, they, sure. they, they, like they would just do that for show, right? But secretly, yes. like, kind of take all the credit. They would do that. They would just kind of harness that. And there was part of that too. And we were talking about the before the podcast. There was a real excitement about the ownership of like the direction of a building and things like that. And like you take a certain pride when you know you're 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 impacting so many kids. But like as you said, 
that family dynamic is so important in many elements. And it's not like, I'm not saying like try to replace family or things like this. You'll, you'll actually really appreciate this. When I first became a principal and I did this every year and it was like, what is something, what's a gift that I have that I could give my, my staff. And it was my parents cooking. I'm not even kidding. So my parents were masterful cooks. They own a restaurant forever and they love taking care of people. And we would have like a big Greek meal with the entire staff and we invite the superintendents and it was like, so like family oriented. And it just like set the direction because it wasn't, it was like, we're sitting there breaking bread and, and just, it was just really powerful. And, you know, kind of thinking about that, that was to kind of help people, you know, feel cared for. And, you know, like, you know, because you know, they're giving up so much of themselves in that space and you want to like, you know, and I, like I couldn't cook. <laughs> so, I, so I was like, nah, this is my mom and dad. So I'm going to, I'm going to tweak this question. You, I know you didn't I, take the, you didn't take the credit. You didn't take the credit. Absolutely right? not. No, that's, that's all my mom and dad that like, like staff started liking me when my parents showed up, they're like, Oh, you know, his mom calls him Georgie. You can't be that bad. So, so I'm going to tweak this question just a little bit, uh, based on what you just said. So I asked you like, you know, if you could start at the beginning of your teaching career, what advice would you give yourself? But I'm not going to actually do that with you. I want to know at the beginning of your admin career, because uh, you know, you, you kind of shared some of those struggles that you have. So if you could go back now and talk to Dr. Allo, you know, at the beginning of her admin career, what advice would you give yourself? I, I threw a loop at you. I did it. Yeah, that one's, that one's a tough <laughs> one. What would I, what would I give myself? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. I think I know. So, um, I would tell myself to hold to, um, what my heart feels is the right thing to do mm -hmm. because yeah. I think that in the beginning, when you don't know or are unsure, you begin to waver mm -hmm. with what others are suggesting or mm -hmm. what others are telling you. And it's okay to take in the thoughts and opinions of others, but when it's at the expense and sacrifice of who you at your core mm -hmm. are, then I think that you leave yourself um, open to, um, um, pain mm -hmm. for yourself because you then, um, become unsure about who you are mm -hmm. because you're attempting to yield to the beliefs of others and the thoughts of others. And they're only offering advice. They're trying to be, yep. you know, helpful. Yep. Um, but I would tell myself that, um, you know, kind of, be okay with the way that you're thinking about and feeling about things and ask the questions, but mm -hmm. at the core still kind of go with what your heart in your heart, you know, is the best thing to do. And, and so like, as you're telling this, uh, and you'll, I, I know you'll appreciate this with your, you know, like 20 plus years as an administrator. Uh, I remember that I, I had to have some really tough conversations with staff, right? And like, I'm talking like individual tough conversations, right? And yeah. sometimes it'd be myself and my assistant principal, and it would be like a really tough, hard conversation. And then um, that staff member would leave, and my assistant principal is like, like, how, how are you fine? Like, how are you fine? I'm like, yeah. I like, and I would just like eat my lunch after, right? And I'm like, well, first of all, I, that staff member, like, I'm not, I'm trying to, to support them because we don't want anyone struggling, right? And sometimes when pe we let people continue to struggle, that's actually the worst thing you could do for a person, right? Like yeah. if someone, if you know somebody hates teaching and, and you don't like say like, hey, do you really like this? That they don't wanna be, nobody wants to show up and do bad every day, right? And I think, pe and you're trying to help people too. But I, I, I would say like the reason I can sleep at night is because every time I make the decision, I, I do everything to put my ego aside and focus on what is, what, who, what am I, who am I trying to help here? And what's the best decision I can make with that information. And as long as I put that in the forefront, then I'm okay. Yes. And, and it's, like I said, it's sometimes honoring and, you know, some people might not like this because it's like, well, you know, 
everyone is everyone's doing awesome all the time not no they're not and i i it's and it's and i think it's sometimes it's because of tough circumstances it's but you're you're literally trying to like help people through some of those conversations because i don't want to see people fail i don't want people to struggle but as long as i keep that whereas i i feel and you know this too that sometimes the ego drives the decision and it's about, it's not about, it's about being right as opposed to doing what's right. Yes. Right. And yes. I think oh, if that's yeah. where you are, I think that's where a lot of people, that's when you struggle with your decision, right? It's like you, you did something that made you feel good, but wasn't the right thing. Do you know what I mean? Yes. And so yes. I, like, I appreciate that. And I, uh, I, I, I have loved talking with you and I'm glad that this is just the beginning of this. So I know we're going to talk a little bit more about Dr. Allah. It was amazing to talk to you and just all your leadership lessons. I know people are going to love to hear from you more. So thanks for being on the podcast. Uh, three questions and thanks everyone for listening. Thank you. <laughs> Gotta play the outro. Thanks everybody.